On a bright morning, a few weeks before the Festival of Summer Wonders, Lady Frisia Forestwish set out on her journey to Nordloch. Northbound carriages always leave Meadow Grass Village from near the park gates, on the other side of the treehouse library. The trip continues through the village, crossing the stone bridge to Aconfield and past the vast meadows of Quiet Pond the small kingdom ruled by the House of Asterlands lies. On the same carriage was Lord Valerin, the senior member of the Council of the Valley, who was also travelling to the neighbouring town, as it is there where meadow grasses purchase most of the fabrics for the festival buntings and attires. Lord Valerin was a bit surprised to see Lady Forestwish heading north, carrying her suitcase, but, as usual, he was glad to see her and share a carriage with her. Lord Valerin, a very capable man, is the heart of the town. Even though he always has a bright smile on his face, he is in charge of all serious matters. Everything important in Meadow Grass Village passes through his hands. But with his cheerful personality and singular charisma, he also plays an essential role during festivals and events. Lady Frisia will trust Lord Valerin with her life, but this time she couldn't tell him the real reason for her visit and simply told him she was in search of new herbs for her apothecary and spent the rest of the trip sharing delicious treats and contemplating the bountiful green vegetation at the sides of the road. After the carriage dropped her at the doors of the palace, Lady Forestwish was escorted by the maids and welcomed by the king and queen of Norloch. The Aster lances look nothing like the elegant portraits. Her faces look pale and full of sorrow. Lady Frisia comprehended the gravity of the matter. After the couple acquainted her with the details of all the prestigious doctors that had abandoned the case, it was time for Lady Frisia to meet the princess. The room was not what she expected. It was different to the rest of the palace. The damsel was lying in bed. Her blonde hair and emerald eyes had lost their sparkle. Her rosy cheeks were now tainted by dark circles under the eyes. Lady Frisia kindly asked the princess a few questions but it was her parents who answered them every time. The princess nodded. Lady Frisia carefully observed the room again. There was something particular about it. It was cheerful, simpler, and above it felt familiar. Lady Frisia asked if she could have a moment alone with the princess. Her parents left the room. Princess Amelia looked tired, but, above all, she looked lifeless. Lady Frisia asked her a few more questions, and, with each answer, her concerns grew stronger. She walked around the room and stopped in front of a piece of old bunting on the wall. A few steps away, there was a small glass cabinet where more familiar items were displayed. Lady Frisia was a meadow grasser, 
but she knew the symbols and heritage of all neighboring towns very well, especially the Anamax. Lady Frisia opened her herb suitcase and addressed the princess. I'm going to prepare a cup of tea. I'm sure it will be a good starting point. Would you like to know how I learned to make it? She asked in a very soft voice. The princess nodded. Lady Frisia was a fine storyteller, and her time with the Animax was a story worth telling. The princess listened carefully, her eyes sparkled and her mouth let out a few sighs. Lady Frisia was paying attention to the princess's breathing gestures until she suddenly saw some tears rolling down her fair young skin. At that moment, Lady Frisia knew which terrible illness had taken the princess and that it would take more than hers to heal her.
the large flames to the size of the thatched structure guided the way to the food and the tables. In the center, a huge wooden table accommodated the delights gratefully displayed. Mrs. Rochelle Flowerberry was undoubtedly in charge of the banquet and baked most of the desserts. Garden salads, pies, stuffed mushrooms and roasted vegetable platters, cons on the car, berry crumble and dessert galore were placed in stands with several layers, adorned with flowers and green leaves. To the sides, two other tables offered the guests colorful plates, bowls and mugs to serve the food. Halved infused lemonade, chamomile mild and oat beer were available in huge barrels. Summer banquets, the last evening of the Festival of Summer Wonders in Meadowgrass Village, are closed with a breathtaking spectacle, with performances from two visiting towns and, of course, the final speech by the residents of Meadowgrass Village. Villagers from all corners gather around the tables to share anecdotes and drinks. While some prefer to dance, and others stayed close to the buffet, savoring the last crumbs, many approached the table of old Mrs. Lindsay Whitlambert, the village storyteller, whose tales whisked them away to magical realms beyond their imaginations. Mrs. Lindsay has charming eyes and a soothing voice, and as she always wears the red lipstick that her good friend Lady Frisia makes for her with rose petals, she is one of the most elegant people in town. At her table, other personalities like Lady Frisia, Lord Valerine, Mrs. Lunacha Moon, Mrs. Yarraby and Mr. Christoph Graharp were pleased to enjoy the company of their fellow villagers. Whenever Mrs. Lindsay needed a pause, Mrs. Lunacha entertained her friends at the table by talking about the events of the Treehouse Library next autumn. When the crowd had eaten, drunk and danced enough, everyone returned to the seats. And the silence of the evening, only interrupted by the crackling flames, the flattering wings of a bird were heard. Mr. Crowharp's bed, a friendly crow, flew towards him and purred on his shoulder. He stood up and walked to the centre. Mr. Crowhart was a very shy man, and only those who knew him well knew how smart and kind he was. With his wingy friend on his shoulder, he overcame his shyness and, like every summer, he presented the musical spectacle that everyone awaited. This year, the Norloch people were in charge of the opening, with a whimsical and relaxing concert of harps and fellows. Fellows are very delicate and difficult to play, and just a few musicians can really master it. After the Norlochians came the Anamachs, with a concert of instrument that imitated the sounds of nature and mass in the villages in a world of wonder. Once the concerts were over, it was time for Meadow Grasses to invite the friends to the Lake of Dreams for the final event. A few seconds after they left the tables, a group of approaching lights caught the attention of the residents, and when the carriage and the flags were recognizable, Lady Frisia Forestwish knew that what she had done was the right thing to do.